So folks, we want to continue with our study, the theme being prayer, um, in the book of Exodus, really considering the life of Moses and Pharaoh, and seeing how to serve God in, in a very difficult time, and how to stand firm in the faith. And I want you to really experience the growth of faith in Moses um, and Aaron. And I want you to see how God will take a life of one man who came to a point in his life, thought he was a washout, thought he was done for. But yet God will revive Moses and will make him one of the greatest leaders in history and a greatest leader for the church of Jesus Christ. You may not realize this, or you may forget, but the heritage of the church of Jesus Christ has its roots from the children of Israel at this time. My message in Exodus 11, chapter 1 to, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 to verse 11, uh, I've entitled, the eve of final retribution. There are a few things I want you to see, uh, we want to see together from this passage of scripture. You see, this is a final plague which has been brought to Pharaoh's heart. And this couple of things I want you to see. First, I want you to see God's final words given to Moses to take to Pharaoh. Moses 1 to 3. And then I want you to see God's final judgment declared to Pharaoh. Remember we looked at how in the last chapter, the Bible tells us twice, Pharaoh had hardened his heart. In this chapter, in chapter 10, we are told that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Let me just relate to you what's happening in our world today so that you can see the parallels of our study and the truth from God's word. One of the leaders in the United States of America said, it's a woman, she said, I have to apologize because I have not been good to Mother Earth. And she goes on to say, she should have stood up for the environment long time ago and had put all her power and force behind this thing about the environment. She said, now Mother Earth is angry with her. And then she goes on to say, Mother Earth is angry with the Democrats because they have not fought hard enough about the environment and, and all that. And she said, that's why the Democrat-run cities are facing such great disasters. As I read that, forgive me, folks, first I broke out in laughter, and then it saddened my heart. Just this morning I heard, John MacArthur says, what is coming out of California? Everything to do with people destroying their bodies through sex and drugs and every other foolishness has got its roots from the Hollywood and from California. All the people who believe in Mother Earth is propagated from California. You would think with all the disasters they have suffered, they would fall on their knees and say, God, if you're there, show us a way out. But what do you see? You see this belligerent, stubborn attitude. Well, we are going to do good for Mother Earth because all of a sudden, some have thought they are gods and they have power. In fact, one of the leaders in the uh, United States of America said recently, and he runs for the president, he said, when I become the president, there'll be no more hurricanes, no more floods, no more tornadoes. He said, I will take care of that. And I'm saying, really? Wow. 
Can you imagine that kind of power? Remember when the disciples were with Jesus in the boat and there was such a, ter a tempest on the, on the Sea of Galilee and the disciples who were fishermen feared for their lives and they said, Lord, don't you care because you were sleeping in the bow of the ship. They said, don't you care, we are perishing. And Jesus stood up and he rebuked the wind and the storm and everything turned calm. And the disciples looked at one another and said, what manner of men is this? What manner of men is this? That even the wind and the storm obey his voice. You see how in a subtle way we are trying to replace God by making ourselves God. And people, let's see what happens now as we come to Exodus chapter 11. A clear story about the ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh, who thought he was God. And he would pit himself against the God of the heavens. The one who says, I am who I am. The one who is the creator of heaven and earth. The one who shows by his power that the four winds of the uh, corners of the earth are in his hand. And he can do with it whatever he desires. So here we come to see the eve of the final retribution. This is taking us in the mouth of the tenth plague. The last plague God will bring on the land of Egypt. And I want you to follow along and see how God's truth will just uh, shake our hearts and our mind and either it will draw us closer to him or it will make us run. God's final word given to Moses, verses 1 to 3. You see, on the eve of the final retribution, God reveals to his servants the things that are shortly to come to pass. That means God communicates with Moses. Let's read the text, Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Yet one plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Very interesting. Why God would give this specific words to Moses. Remember God said, Pharaoh will not let you go. Pharaoh will harden his heart. Pharaoh will not let you go until all my, not all of God's power, but until my power has been displayed for Pharaoh and the Egyptians and for you, Moses. You know, it doesn't mean that God is not interested in those outside this church. But I'll tell you what, we are the apple of God's eyes. He first has to get his deals made with us. It is us that he wants to draw nearer to him. And many times, we as a church slack behind. And that's what makes us ineffective to be a witness to the world around us. I want you to look at Pharaoh for a moment now. He is like a tree. Remember the locusts, the plague of locusts that came? They stripped everything that was green. Pharaoh has become a tree that is left bare. Like the locust has eaten all the greenery from this tree and all the fruit. And the tree now is bare. And this is how Pharaoh is. He has been stripped of all his power. The power he thought he had. Keep that in the back of your mind. You see, on the eve of the final retribution, God reveals to his servant the things that are surely to come to pass. Secondly, on the eve of final retribution, the servants of God must direct the activities of the church. And this is why I do appreciate, and I do not uh, say without any shame or fear, I appreciate a man like Dr. John MacArthur. He has stood against the government who is trying to shut down the church, shut down every church. And he said, no, enough is enough. God's people need to come together and worship. This morning I heard him uh, give an interview. He said 7,000 people that gather together in the church. 
He said, it's impossible to keep everybody six feet apart. He said, it's impossible for people to sing with masks on. He said, and now we've been meeting for weeks on end. And he said, can I say to you, there hasn't been one COVID case in his church. Is God capable of looking after his people? Yes. A million times yes. So why is it the church will fear the dictates of men, put our tails in between and hide in the corner? Because I'll tell you, it's a measure of our faith. Who do we really believe in? So we see on the eve of final retribution, the servants of God must direct the activities of the church. Exodus chapter 11 verse 2. We are told, Moses was told upon the eve of the threatened plague to direct the conduct of the children of Israel. To the Israelites, the retribution was a crisis. It was the supreme moment of their national history and upon the promptitude and wisdom of their conduct. Great issues were dependent, hence they needed direction. Listen to how Exodus chapter 11 verse 2 tells us, Speak now in the hearing of the people that they ask every man his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. Have you ever thought why God would give that kind of dictates? Wasn't their freedom much more important than the gold and the jewelry? What was God showing to Moses? Moses, I can control the heart of every man, woman, boy, and child. And you know what? The Egyptians were going to reward the Jews because it's through the Jews that the God of Hebrews has been exposed to the Egyptians. Remember how uh, Pharaoh's men came to Pharaoh and said, don't you see our land has been destroyed, let them go. In my own human thinking, it's like, man, anything to get rid of you from my sight. So, they willingly will give. But you know what? God said, speak now in the hearing of the people. That they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold and jewelry. So you see, and so all the retributions that come upon mankind have an important bearing toward the life and the history of the Christian church. They are related to its moral freedom and hence it becomes the church to act wisely in them that it may receive the full advantage of the hour. As much as there have been powers behind the scenes trying to shut down churches, listen to this pastor's uh, testimony, not only John MacArthur, but many of the pastors. John MacArthur said, there are more people coming to his church that they don't even know where to put them. He says every room, they've even put tents outside, are occupied people coming and they're saying to Pastor MacArthur, thank you for keeping the church open. Thank you for telling us about God and his program and how he's leading. We want to be a part of the great company of believers. Praise God that what was meant to be something that would uh, take away from the church, like as Joseph said to his brother, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. People, God is marching on. The question is, are we going to march with him?